right, so here we are at uh, Scenic View Campground in Warren, New Hampshire. It's uh, Labor Day 2021, and this is our third trip in our Rockwood Mini Light 2204S. And uh, we actually just got done with a big uh, rainstorm, and now the sun's out. It's beautiful. So, like I said, we have the uh, Mini Light 2204S, which is the twin bed version, and you can see here, here is our twin beds. Uh, my wife did all the decorating. Uh, most of the stuff you see on the walls was not there when we purchased it. Pictures, curtains, uh, all the bedding is all our own bedding. The stuff that they give you with it is okay if you don't really give a crap about that kind of stuff. But <laughs> we wanted it to be uh, really nice looking, so Helen went over and above uh, to decorate. And it looked, came out really, really good. Thanks, honey. Thanks. So uh, here's a quick overview. There's our beds. Uh, here's the kitchen area. Refrigerator in the back. We, we have the 12 volt system with the solar panel on the roof. And the dinette is over here. So we'll start over in the uh, bedroom area. The first thing I wanted to point out in here is that the light and the shelf that you see in the middle that was done by Helen again. This uh, does come with an insert that goes through the middle here, which will turn this into a actually bigger than a king size bed. I don't I don't even know how wide it is, but it's definitely big. Um, we keep it in a twin bed configuration because we like being able to swing out of the side of the bed. Um, I'll demonstrate how some people that don't have a twin bed get out of bed. They lay on the bed like this and when they get up in the morning their spouse or significant other is over there and they have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't do that. <laughs> we can lay on the bed like this and when we get up in the morning we can do this. And it's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll start out with the storage up here. So we do have some storage cabinets all the way across. Uh, they give you four doors to access the storage. Uh, but you can't really get into these ends unless you reach in uh, over to put stuff over there. You do get, it's hard to see, it's a little dark down here, but you do get uh, two power outlets, a 12 volt uh, charging station, as well as two USB port. So the cabinets are really nice to have. They, they're a good amount of storage. We, we keep our clothes up there. But also underneath the beds, both of them lift up and give you the full storage uh, access down here. And we use this to store mostly our outdoor stuff. Obviously, we keep it in uh, containers to minimize any, you know, moisture or smells or anything like that from coming out. So at the end of this bed on the driver's side of the camper is the uh, inverter system. And down here, you'll see there's a little button. Uh, I hope you can see it. It's a little dark, but that's, that's the on-off switch for the uh, inverter. And that should only be run when you're not plugged into shore power. Underneath the other side, if you don't mind opening that one, Helen. Again, full storage here uh, where you can access the outdoor doors to get in and out uh, all your items and goods. And down here at the end is a shoe storage area, uh, but we also put Stella's dog food and her water there. Uh, it kind of tucks away really nicely under there. So that we really like. On the passenger side, it's a uh, window that flips out maybe like three or four inches. And that's it. That's as far as it goes. On the other side is the emergency escape window, which we hope we never have to use, but that opens up probably eight or ten inches wide, so you can get more airflow out of that side. Oh yeah, these do have the nightshades. They uh, work really well. It keeps it really dark in the morning. Helen gets up very early, um, a few hours before I do usually. Uh, we close these shades. The yeah, do you want to close them? The curtains? Sure. Call, call them shades. Curtains. And you can see what it looks like with the curtains closed. And we can open them. And so, a combination of all the shades and the curtains, it keeps it nice and dark in here for me still. Uh, you know, at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning while Helen's up and about doing her thing at 
that hour. <laughs> Up here we have a roof vent. Uh, we really can feel the air come out of this. It's closed right now because it was raining and we don't have the vent cover like we do on the Max Air Fan in the back. Um, but you can really feel the air being pulled in by the fan in the bathroom when you turn it on. And this is open. It really airs the, the whole trailer right out really fast. There is two sets of speakers. We have uh, number two, I think, is on the end over here. Two speakers. And then number one is over here in the kitchen and dining area. And you can see on the, the radio control, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, there's three options, one, two, and three. So one and two are turned on. Three is turned off because that's the outdoor speakers, which we don't want to annoy our neighbors too much when we're watching uh, Harry Potter or whatever we're watching. <laughs> so you may notice that we have a lot of these lights on the ceiling turned on. This one's actually turned off. They all have push buttons in the middle so we can individually turn them on and off. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to turn them all off here in the bedroom. And you can see that we still have a good amount of light coming in through the windows um, and with the one lamp on the end of the bed. We do have ducted air conditioning in this trailer. So we um, don't usually use it though. A couple times we've had the AC on. We found that when the air conditioner is running with these vents fully open, it actually cools the camper down faster than using the vents. So the ducts go through the ceiling, uh, cut through the, the the styrofoam, I guess it is, that, that makes up the roof panels. Um, and it's ducted in two places in the front to point at the beds. If we wanted to turn these, we can rotate them in any position we want. Then we have two in the middle here. We have one here in the back by the refrigerator and then one in the bathroom to keep it cool in there if it's too hot. Uh, getting back to the lights. So you can see these lights are pretty bright. Keeps everything very, very lit up. Very easy to see, very easy to read or prepare for cooking or whatever you're doing. Uh, down here in the main control panel, there's uh, basically an override button. I can push it and all the lights turn off. You can push it again and all the lights come on. So if we turn off this light here and I turn off the lights, they all go out and I turn it back on, that one stays out. So you can selectively uh, keep lighting the way you want it by turning these individual LED lights on and off. All right, talk a little bit about the control panel down here. Uh, I hope you can see that. So up here we have a uh, battery indicator, fresh water tank indicator, black tank indicator, and a gray tank indicator. So when I push this button, you'll see the LEDs light up to tell you if you're empty, one third, two thirds, or full. So our battery is 100% right now, it's full. Fresh water tank is empty because we're on city water at the campground here. Our black tank is at one-third, and our gray tank is at one-third. So the black and gray tanks in this unit are 32 gallons each, and the fresh tank, I believe, is 50-something, 50 52 or 54 gallons. So those are pretty good size. This does have the Wi-Fi Ranger. Uh, I'm not sure how well it actually works at this point. Kind of iffy to tell if it's actually doing anything for us. The one, the one good thing that it does do for us is we have uh, on the wall here, we have what's called a temperature monitor. It's made by TempStick. And we use that to monitor the temperature in the trailer when we're out. So that's connected to our Wi-Fi Ranger. And the Wi-Fi Ranger sits up on the roof and that connects to the campground Wi-Fi system. So what we can do is we can always leave the temperature stick connected to the Wi-Fi Ranger and when we get into a new campground that has a new Wi-Fi connection we'll connect the Wi-Fi Ranger to it and the temp stick monitor will always be connected to the Wi-Fi Ranger. There's an app for the temp stick 
and when it's connected it just sends readings at you know a preset time uh, I think ours is set up for every 30 minutes it'll send a, the temperature uh, to my phone and you can see right now we're at 70.3 and I can set alerts so if it gets too hot let's say I set the uh, threshold to 85 degrees as soon as it hits 85 degrees I'll get a warning on my phone sent through email and text um, so I can come back and I can, you know, see if my air conditioner is working because we don't want to leave Stella in a very hot camper, uh, you know, if we go to the pool or if we have to go to town or go to the grocery store or something like that. So we found the temp stick to be, uh, if you have pets, you need it. You need to get a, a temperature monitoring system of some sort. And by connecting it to the Wi-Fi ranger directly, we don't have to reset up the temp stick every single time we go to a new camper, new uh, campground. So getting back uh, to the controls down here, uh, you have an interior light control. We have a porch light control, awning, and a step light control. So we can turn all the lights on or off here. We have our slide out and our awning power controls here. So we do have uh, a dinette that is on a slide in the 2204S model. I believe you can also get this one with a couch. Two, two, uh... Is it captain's chairs or, or a sofa? I forget. Yeah, something like something that. We, either. we really wanted the dinette so that, you know, if it's raining out, we can eat inside. And we I don't like the, the layout of the couches. I like to sit around a table and we can still uh, watch TV from the dinette. We can pull, we could actually pull the table out and fold it up, which I'll show you later and put it away and watch TV, which is right across. So it, it actually like is really hand, handy and it sits like a couch. The other thing too with the twin beds, talking about the TV, is we can set the twin beds up as day beds or couches. You know, we like we have lots of pillows, so we can line the pillows up. The television swings out, uh, so you can pretty much set it at any angle, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and we can sit on the twin beds and use them as couches to watch TV as well. Uh, so we have a Wi-Fi on and off switch. We always leave that on. I, I don't think we've ever shut that off since we've gotten the camper. I don't know why we even need a switch, honestly. It should just be on all the time. Uh, water pump for when we're hooked up, uh, when we're not hooked up to city water. Uh, we have a gas water heater bu power button and an electric water heater power button. And we have tank heaters in case uh, it gets really cold. So we usually run the water heater off of the electric power um, so that we don't waste propane. And the way we understand it is if we're boondocking and we don't have power, we can use the gas to heat up water. Or if we need hot water extra fast, we can turn both on and they will both work in, you know, together uh, to create hot water very, very fast. The tank's only six gallons, so it's not going to last a whole long time, but uh, it's good to know that we can do that if we need to. So, we have a screen door here. You can hear it's starting to rain outside a little bit. Uh, the screen door does have a pass-through, which is nice if you want to pass the ketchup out or you want to clean up and you need to pass dishes in to, to wash dishes or whatever. Uh, the, the door handle itself is... I don't know. This trip, I've noticed it's been a little sticky or something. It's, mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't open mm -hmm. properly. There is a little springy thing here. You can see it has tension when I pull it in and out. And that basically makes sure that the screen door closes um, after you're exiting out. And that's this screenshot. We do have uh, two outlets. One's a GFCI protected outlet. The other is an inverter circuit. So throughout the trailer, you'll see that there's some outlets that are labeled as inverter circuits. And what that means is that you can only use those uh, particular outlets if you're on inverter power. So if we're out in the, in the middle of nowhere and we have solar panels on, the 12 volt system will convert using the inverter into 110 power. Uh, obviously, it's not going to last long unless we have a lot of solar power or we have a generator to to recharge the battery, but that's that's how those work. We also have a propane and CO2 detector down here. We have our main breaker panel here. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had to touch it, but everything seems to be labeled very well and it seems to be easy to access. And uh, You want to keep spare fuses with you um, just in case you have a problem. In this cabinet, we have some games and this is a little storage area. This is also 
where we could go if we needed to access uh you know any of the under sink uh, utilities if we needed to get at the, the the pipes or the water runs or things like that we could uh, take all this stuff out of here and basically pull this little flimsy piece of cardboard off with a couple screws you can see the screws are down down here uh, I probably wouldn't even I don't know, there's some that's just super cheap you know that's not, that's not high quality but if we remove those panels we could get at everything under the sink there you can see the sink bowl probably maybe you can see the sink bowl and the plumbing and you can see the little tower of power back there also down along the floor you know heat rises and you know cool air flows to the bottom so they actually laid this out properly uh, we have the heating ducts are in uh, the cabinets they're not coming up out of the floor which is really nice I've read a lot of uh, people have issues with heating ducts in the floor where they're sweeping the floor and they'll start sweeping crap into it or they'll lose their keys or who knows what so in this camper we have uh, one duct here which basically feeds the bedroom area. We have another duct around the side here that feeds the dining area below the refrigerator that also feeds the kitchen and dining area. And then we have one in the bathroom so you can get out of the bathroom and not be freezing. Basically when the slide comes in you can squeeze through to get into the bathroom if you're a hundred pounds. And if you weigh any more than a hundred pounds, you're not gonna be able to use the bathroom or get into the refrigerator with this model, with the slide closed. And I hear lots of people make videos or whatever, and they say, oh, I need to be able to get into the bathroom so, you know, in case I have to pull over and take it or whatever they gotta do. Well, you know what? If I have to go to the bathroom that bad that I have to pull over, I can take an extra two seconds to open the slide so I can get to my bathroom. It's not gonna, it I just need to move it a foot so I can get to it. So it really doesn't bother me. So when you open the slide fully, the outside edge of the slide itself here along this edge has a little rubber seal behind it which seals you from the elements outdoors uh, so that's your first indicator that the slide is fully open but it'll also create like a ratcheting click 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 sound when it's fully open and i would say the slide out total extension is three and a half feet maybe well, when we do the outside walk, we'll put a tape measure on it. We'll see how far it sticks out. But it really does create a great amount of room inside the camper. And the ceiling is super, super uh, high. I'm six feet tall. And you can see how much room I have here. I probably have another, what, six or eight inches there. Uh, so that's really nice. It feels very roomy. It feels course. very, very it's roomy. Camper, it yeah. feels super roomy. Yeah, this is only a 22 foot long box, uh, 24 foot from tongue to tail. So it's not a huge camper. It's 4,700 pounds uh, unloaded. Toes real easily, real easy to hook up, real easy to maneuver. I have a super tight driveway. I, I was able to put it in the driveway, no problem. Uh, but it does feel very open and very roomy, which is really, really nice. So the slide out area has lots of good storage as well. So we have a storage cabinet here. Yeah, oh, so pantry or a coat closet. All these individual shelves are removable. Um, and up in the top, I don't know if we can, you can really see it well, but there's a hanger. Um, you can see that we have these little shelves in here and we use those shelves uh, to get even more space. Cause I mean, this is probably a foot, foot and a half tall right here. And this is another foot and a half here. You know, there's a lot of wasted space vertic vertically there. So we could actually, yeah, we could put extra shelves in, um, which wouldn't be too hard to do, I don't think. So that's something to think about. Behind the dinette and the, along the ceiling, you have four more cabinets and then these open up and we keep like DVDs and our, our dishes and things like that in there. So that's a nice amount of storage as well. Everything we need, we keep in here. It's, it's Helen and I, uh, we have everything we need. I don't think we're lacking anything. We have extra dishes for when we have company. We have extra cups and bowls and we have and lots of space left over exactly so in in this middle section here there's no cabinet um, I was thinking about taking this panel out and making that an open access thing to put stuff in and out with a basket or, or whatever uh, otherwise I mean we can reach in and just slide things over like that if we wanted to down below each of the seats are drawers 
And so these drawers are pretty big, good sized drawers. They're on slides and they all snap shut. And then Stella's in the way over here, but you can see we have more stuff there. The dinettes themselves are actually pretty comfortable, right? Wouldn't you say they're comfortable? Yeah, I think they are, yeah. Yeah? On a scale of one to ten, how comfortable are they? I mean, we're not sitting there all day, so, um, but they are, I mean, they, they do their job. You, yeah, so it's not bad. It's not the best, you know, it's not like having a, a couch, but it, but they work out pretty good. So we took everything off the table so we could demonstrate how much of a pain in the butt this thing is to operate, because it's, it's not the easiest table I've ever tried to fold, and I probably, it's probably going to take me extra time just to show you how to do it, <laughs> but it's good practice. The bad thing is, is when you're traveling, and if you don't fold the table down, you know, it can kind of walk itself all over the camper. And when the slide's in, it's basically going to smash into the kitchen uh, kitchen area cabinets and maybe cause some damage. So you're supposed to fold it up. And the way you fold this up is you lean it forward so it's resting on the back dinette like that. Lift it up and you have a little yellow lever here. We pull that lever out and the whole thing will fold like this. Oops. <gasps> See what I'm saying about it being awkward? It'll fold like that. And it will rest on these little black pegs that are on each side. And we'll move the cushions out of the way. And that's actually easier. And that's how you travel. And that's actually easier than opening it. <laughs> yeah. So that was the easy part. Yeah. This also converts into a bed. Uh huh. So if we had our grandkids, we could take these cushions in the back. And these guys will go here and here. It's actually a pretty roomy bed. Yeah, and we could, you know. You could sleep an adult in there. Yeah, an adult or, or, or a couple two of grandkids kids. could sleep in there yeah. pretty comfortably. There's plenty of room. So to unfold the table, let's see how we can do this. We're going to pull it off, tip it up against the back like this. It's not light. It takes some muscles. Yeah, it's not. It. It's not light. That's, that's a good point. It's not light. So now I'm going to put. Oh my God! I did it right. Yeah! <laughs> so when it's folded like this, all you do is push down and around okay. like, you're, like you're doing a crank, okay. and it'll right. snap the yellow. You got the yellow lever. It'll snap the yellow lever into place, yeah. and now we're fully. That's the first time it was ever easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the first time it was ever easy. So uh, we took a little break there after trying to unfold the table and get that demonstration done. We both needed a drink. Alan got some wine. I got some spiked iced tea. So we're <laughs> we're good to go. Uh, here it is Labor Day weekend. It's Monday. It's been uh, on and off sunshine and pouring rain and sunshine. And uh, right now we're kind of in an intermediate uh, setting. Sunshine and rain. Sunshine and rain almost. Yeah. So. We're going to continue the video since we can't go outside. Moving on from the dinette, we have this light here, which I actually, you know, it's it's just plastic. It's That's nothing. Not hideous, it's not hideous, but it's not super beautiful. I guess we could change it. Yeah, I mean this thing we can remove. <laughs> we can remove, and we could actually put a different uh, shade here if we wanted to. So that's actually a nice feature. Um, you can see that it's all LEDs. This is plastic, thankfully, because you saw me just basically drop it. This looks like it's a standard light size, hanging light size, so we could easily replace that if we wanted to. And Helen will demonstrate how that goes back on. So that light's not hideous. It's not awful. Um, it's okay. I do like this light, and I do like the light that is in the vent hood here, which is another LED strip underneath there that you can see. So what we typically do at night is we'll have the LED strip on the vent hood on and that light on, and we'll hit the switch for all the other lights and it's a much more calm, relaxing, uh, more peaceful environment. So that's the way we like to uh, wind down the day. In the back corner here, we have another storage shelf. All these shelves are removable which is nice. And you see we have these little shelves. Where did we get these little shelves? I think they have them at like Dollar General. Yeah, they were super cheap. And you know, they don't really slide around a lot. We're not going off road. We're not slamming the brakes while we're driving, thankfully. Uh, so everything seems to stay in its place. 
very deep cabinets as well. You can see I can put my arm all the way in and I can barely touch the back. So that's super deep. So lots of storage space there. There's also another outlet down here, which is nice. There's plenty of power outlets. Is there one under the dinette? I think there is. So I got my light out so we can see underneath the dinette is an inverter outlet as well. So that's nice to have. No USB ports down here. There is a hole underneath this. I'm not sure why that's like that. They didn't seal that Where? under here. Uh, so you can access this under, under seat storage from outside the slide in. You can't get at it from inside. Um, I guess you could if you remove all the seat cushions and you, you pull. Okay, so they did put a little hole, but it's screwed down. I'm not sure why they did that. So they put a little hole so you can lift the wood underneath the dinette up, but they screwed it in place. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So theoretically you could take that screw out and then you could access your outdoor storage from under the dinette. We're not going to do that because we got plenty of storage indoors where we don't need to access from here. We, we have no need for it. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that we have the 12 volt system uh, with a solar panel on the roof. So far so good with that. You know a lot of people say oh I need propane and electric. I need a dual switch refrigerator. I need this. I need that. We just need something to keep our stuff cold and the 12 volt system has worked no problem for us so far. So the fridge itself is very large. It's probably almost as big as our refrigerator at home. It has a big freezer compartment, big refrigerator compartment uh, with a drawer. And I actually had to turn it down because uh, we had it set at the fit number five and the Pepsi was actually starting to freeze a little bit. So I switched it to the fourth setting and we'll see how that goes. So it's keeping everything very cold. Uh, from an off uh, setting to an on setting, it cools in an hour. It takes virtually no time for the, this refrigerator to get cold, which is also great. We keep it parked into our parked in our driveway, plugged into power all the time, so we're not really using the 12 volt portion of it. Uh, but if we were unplugged on solar power, we could probably run this refrigerator for a week, uh, you know, with no problems, assuming we weren't drawing heavy loads anywhere else. For traveling, it's got this little latch. Uh, you know, there's a chance it may jar loose, but we haven't had any issues with it. Our trip here, this uh, campground, campground visit was... Oh, yeah. So, tension rods. Great way to keep things from sliding around in your refrigerator. So Helen went out and bought three or four more of these tension rods. We have more in the drawer for you. And it keeps all the white claws and the twisted teas and the Diet Pepsi and the wine from rolling all over the fridge if we do hit a pot, right? Or if we do hit a speed bump. So that's uh, come out, come to work for us really, really well. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is the bathroom. It's a tidy, neat little bathroom. Whittle being the keyword. Uh, it does have a skylight up there where my head fits into does have a shower miser which we don't use because we're on city water so uh, we don't need to conserve our hot water our six gallon hot water heater tank regenerates really fast haven't had any issues with that the doors themselves the shower doors I noticed that one of the doors is constantly on the move no matter how level we are it's kind of a pain when you're trying to dry off or step out because there's really not a lot of floor room uh, when you're getting out of the shower so I'm going to step in the shower and sit on the toilet. We do have a porcelain bowl, which is nice. I'll shut the door. And I'm going to sit and show you my feet. And you can see I have some room, so I'm, I'm comfortable. Uh, like I said, I'm a big guy, but if you are any more than 250 or 275, you're going to be, it's going to be a tight fit. This cabinet's maybe six or eight inches deep. Uh, it could stand for some shelving, but they use that cheap, cheap backer board. Um, but I guess that's so that you can get at the plumbing easier. 
So it is what it is. We don't go in there that often anyways. Over here we have another inverter circuit, uh, GFI protected outlet. There's our heat outlet. You know, it's a small wash bowl, it's plastic. It's not porcelain or glass or ceramic or anything like that. It's just you know, cheap plastic. The faucets are plastic, uh, kind of wobbly, kind of wonky. I don't love them. Uh, but for the amount of use that we're gonna put through them, they're probably fine for what we're gonna be doing. Um, we don't need anything too. Uh, you know, we don't need a Moen $400 bathroom faucet in here. It comes with a little plastic uh, stopper. It comes with this shelf. Put your cup. Put your toothbrushes. It's got a nice medicine chest. Uh, three shelves. It's probably four inches deep. You know, it's, it's, it's nice for a medicine chest. There's nothing wrong with it. Got your mirror right, right there as well. Uh, behind the commode is another storage cabinet, and that storage cabinet is probably eight inches deep, and that's where we keep all of our cleaning products. We keep our toilet paper. We keep our uh, paper towels, tissues, beach towels, bath towels, all that kind of stuff stays in here. So it's plenty big enough to be used as a linen closet. And up above is this awesome Max fan, which does wonders. It's amazing how well this thing works uh, to draw air through the camper. And inside the ceiling here, we have a, the air conditioning vent I was telling you about. Two lights, again, individually controllable, and a light switch. So the, light, the, ba the lights in the bathroom can be controlled separately from outside the bathroom. So if I'm in here doing my business and Helen wants to turn the lights out out there, she doesn't put me in the dark. Okay, so this is our kitchen area. Okay, it's got a three burner range. It's got this cover with these squishy things on the end. So when we're driving, we have to squish them down hard so that it doesn't move around in travel. Not entirely sure why they made the cover out of glass. Um, I have I can't see a reason for you it. Think it should have been a steel. It could, yeah, it could have been anything. Um, why does it need to have a cover? Period. Honestly. More counter space. Yeah, but they say more counter space. But what are you going to do on top of that flimsy piece of yeah. glass? You gonna pound a steak on it? No, you're not going to do anything on it. So it's it's. I mean, it when it folds up, this kind of functions as a backsplash. So I guess that's good. But I don't know why it had to be glass. Okay. Um, back here behind there are these little slots that you can use as a knife holder. We haven't put any knives in there, but you could. Okay. These come up off here for easy cleaning so you can easily get to the stove to clean it. Okay. How do you light it? Um, these are the knobs. So how you light it is that you turn on there. You turn that thing on and then you do that and it's lit. So it's very easy to light and then turn it off when you want it off. Okay. This messes with my OCD so I always have to put it back up. The knobs can be lit, which I think is hideous, so we never have them lit. I don't I don't know who's cooking in the dark that needs their knobs lit, but we don't need our knobs lit, so they always stay off. It also has um, an oven and an oven light. We have not used the oven yet. Um, we're happy we have an oven because there may be a time that we want to use the oven, but we just haven't used it yet. But we're glad we have one. So that's that. Okay. All right. Over here that we have lots of drawers. The top drawer here is basically to hold sponges or I stick my little dish soap in there um, to keep it off the counter. And then this is our silverware drawer. This little insert came with the camper to hold our silverware. And we have our lighters and can opener and stuff in there. This is the infamous junk drawer. Everybody's got junk drawer. So that's ours. Got all kinds of crap in there. And this drawer down here, we keep our extra towels and um, tablecloths for outside and whatnot in there. Okay. These are the dreadful sinks. I don't know why anybody wants 
I don't know why Rockwood thinks that anybody wants two teeny tiny little airplane sinks in their kitchen. Um, you can barely even fit a plate in there to wash it. I mentioned that on a Rockwood Facebook group. I mentioned the fact that it's silly to have two tiny little sinks where a big sink would be much more um, convenient. And everybody said, well, do your dishes outside. And I thought to myself, well, if I wanted to do my dishes outside, I probably would have purchased a tent and not an RV. Like, what's the point in having it if you can't use it? So what I did is I bought a collapsible dish drainer. I bought a collapsible dish drainer, and I had it here, and it was awful because it just took up too much room. So what I do now is I fill this sink with water, put the dirty dishes, well, whichever ones will fit in here, and then I wash them and then I put them in here and rinse them and then I just towel dry them and put them away right away and that method has worked out so much better for us because it's not there's not a big dish strainer sitting there on the sink all the time with dishes drying and um, the other thing too is that this faucet every time you turn it on basically the whole entire kitchen gets wet I don't I don't know what it is about it. I mean, like my home kitchen doesn't do that. So I don't know, understand why this faucet makes that happen. But every time it splashes so bad, every time you turn on this faucet, you have to wipe down the whole kitchen area when you're done. So if Rockwood watches this, please put one large sink in the kitchens. Nobody wants two tiny sinks in their kitchen. Well, I don't anyway. Okay, up here is the, the vent and it's got a light and it's also got a fan which comes in handy because every time you cook the smoke detector goes off so um, that comes in handy and then it's got a really nice microwave um, I'm five foot seven and so I'm pretty tall for a woman but I have a hard time seeing up in there and I mean it's I guess you know it's a camper so they had to put things where they could put them but it is kind of on the high side but it's really nice it works really well we use it all the time um, this was just an empty spot up in here and we put in a paper towel holder and they should probably just put a paper towel holder in there. What's it going to cost them? Two dollars? Uh, yeah, something? to put a, I mean really, stick a paper towel holder up in there because it's kind of like what else are you going to do with that spot and you need a paper towel holder. So that's where ours is. Um, this kitchen has decent counter space. I mean there's this thing here. We have our Keurig um, up here. We keep it here while we're camping. We obviously put everything away while we're driving, but we keep it here while we're camping. So um, this is the Tower of Power. We just pull that up in the morning, plug it in. Um, it's got, what are these called? USB. USB ports, and it's got a GFCI plug, regular plug. Um, and that comes in handy. And then you push this little red button there and it slides right back down in there. So that's good. Keeps it in, out of the way. I like that it's there because there's a place to plug your coffee pot in. So that's great. Um, and I like that you can push it down out of the way when you don't need it. Okay. But there is kind of, there's nice counter space here. I mean, there's, there's plenty of room to do what you need to do. Um, but if you didn't have enough room, they also have this fold up extra piece of countertop. Um, on this trip, we just realized that it's coming loose so it folds, it folds up like that and it's nice you know it's nice and stable and sturdy and gives you a little bit of extra counter space but it's broken so it's not really attached right there so we're gonna have to address that before we head home because we don't want it to fall off and hit the floor and break on the way home um, the kitchen's great. I love the kitchen. Kitchen's got two little windows. They open individually of each other. Individually, is that a word? Yeah. They open. <laughs> Good word. And screen, and that's nice to have. I like a nice big um, window in the kitchen. And then it's got these regular blinds. I guess they couldn't put paper blinds near the stove. So um, no ugly prints, which I love about this camper. A lot of campers have big gaudy, um, what do you call them, things? Valances. Valances. Even over in like the dining area and stuff. We have a little tiny bit of a pattern, which I'm not in love with, but it's not hideous and gaudy like a lot of the ones that I've seen. So I can deal with it. But um, that's basically our kitchen. Other than the tiny two little sinks, I really like it. So to wrap things up, I'm going to show you a little bit of the electronics that are in the kitchen area as well. 
Well, the first place we'll look at is the television. So it's a Furion television. I think it's 28 or 27 inches. Do you remember what? Oh, <laughs> do you remember what how, how large the TV was? No, I don't. I think it's a 28 inch TV, and it's a nice TV. Nice size. It gives us 720. It's not a smart TV, so you can't stream directly to it. You can't do any of that kind of stuff. It does pop out, so it's kind of snapped into a holder for travel, and then it swings out like this. So that you can point it to the bedroom area while you're in bed you can watch tv or we can turn it like this and watch tv while we're at the dinette um, inside the cabinet here there's a little tiny bit of storage where we could put some stuff i don't know maybe like a remote or yes yeah, a couple dvds maybe so this little pin right here pops into this little notch for traveling. Uh, one other thing you may notice, in the back there is an inverter circuit, uh, so you can watch TV when you're boondocking. It doesn't use too much power, but you can keep your eye on it if you do that. And down below that, there's a little button for uh, TV and satellite to switch in between the two of them. So the TV has controls on the side. You can see over here, you know, your standard volume, power, source, things like that. But it does come with a remote as well. And I got to show you this remote. This remote is ridiculous. So the remote that comes with the television is this guy here. And I think you need a college degree to operate it. And I'm not an old guy. I, I know electronics. I'm not scared of them. But this is just nuts, the amount of buttons on this remote. I've never seen anything like this. I probably have to sit down for four hours just to figure out everything this thing is capable of. But not only is it funny that you just get this one remote, you also have the radio unit and DVD unit and uh, Bluetooth and all that up here. And that comes with a remote as well with another 50 buttons. So it takes two remotes to run the TV unit. So we got to spend some time to figure those out because that's a lot. <laughs> it's really a lot with those buttons. We know channel up and down, power on and off volume. That's kind of all we need when we need to turn on the DVD. If we're watching a DVD in bed from over here, and I'm laying in my bed, and the TV is out towards us, like this, and I'm laying in bed, guess what? It's blocking the little receiver. So I can't pause the movie. I can't stop the movie. I can turn the TV off with the other remote, but the little remote is the one that operates the DVD. So I have to get up so I can face this guy, which is the receiver for that remote. So that's kind of poor thinking. I, I think maybe if they put this receiver in a more centrally located spot, it probably would have worked a little better. But I'm glad we have TV. It's nice to be able to watch. Uh, movies and DVDs while we're traveling. Uh, so this little remote thing here, this IRV Technologies, you can also get an app on your phone and run it off of your phone if you want. I don't mind getting up to push a button, but it's it's pretty straightforward. Right now, you see it says uh, BT no LIN, so that's Bluetooth no line basically. I don't have a blue my phone hooked up to it, but I did before, and we were listening to music through my Bluetooth on speaker system number one and number two. Number three is the outdoors. We don't usually turn that on so we don't annoy our neighbors. Um, but when I do turn on the Bluetooth on my phone, okay, I'm back, sorry, I ran out of space on my memory card. Um, so I was saying, yeah, there's a lot of buttons on the remote. You can't access it, the IRV remote from the bedroom area, which is kind of a pain, but we get around that and you know we can get up to stop a movie or whatever it's not a big deal um, so I was mentioning the Bluetooth on here I can get my phone hooked up to IRV 63 connect and I can go to my Spotify press play So 
Okay. It plays from Spotify, you know, any Bluetooth music, no problem to all three sets of speakers. So that's a nice feature. So when we want to listen to some music, we can do that. Uh, the volume isn't bad. It's pretty, can't get right up there if we want to annoy the neighbors really, really badly. Uh, but we don't right now, so we're going to stop it. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to hit the mute button right there so I can finish talking about this. So we have AM and FM radio as well. AM 1, 2, FM 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we have a clock so we can display the clock. And then the mode, we can switch it to DVD. And you see the television automatically responds. And I think we have a DVD in there right now. Yeah, so it's reading the DVD. And it's playing the credits from the last movie that we watched. So that's kind of cool. You know, you have your standard stop, start, fast forward, all that good stuff here. And a, a DVD eject button. Which hopefully it'll open. And it will spit out the movie. So that's nice. Uh, it also has an HDMI port here and another USB charging port. You could actually take like a, a Roku stick or Amazon Fire Stick and plug it in here or plug it into the open spot in the back of the TV and get streaming video if you have good enough service at your campground. So that's another nice feature. So it's a pretty nice little unit. Uh, one annoyance is all the buttons on the remotes. I'm sure they all do something really cool. Maybe someday I'll figure it out if I ever care enough to take the time to do it. Uh, over on the wall, we don't have the digital thermostat. Uh, in this unit we have a, a analog I guess you'd call it thermostat works perfectly fine you know it's got an appropriately uh, adjustable knob depending on what temperature you want to be set at roughly you know it's not going to be super accurate it's got heating uh, with the comes out of the vents that I showed you before the heating unit is underneath the stove behind this uh, this vent cover here and vents out into the outside of the camper it's got a cooling fan which will turn on the air conditioning unit, uh, a cooling switch, sorry, which will turn on the air conditioning unit. We can set that to auto so it'll read the temperature and it'll come on when it needs to and shut off when it when it's uh, up to temperature. Uh, we can just do an exhaust and turn the fan on low high uh, just to keep uh, the air flowing inside as well. And up above that is our GoPower uh, battery monitor and that's uh, for the solar panel and the battery unit. We have one 12 volt battery in this camper, which is plenty. Uh, we're 99% of the time we're gonna be plugged into shore power. And you can see our battery right now is at 100%. Uh, we have 853 amp hours, I guess. Uh, and it shows the charge settings and things like that. I'm not really up to speed on all that. And there's another uh, port here where you can plug into it to do a more cool stuff, which, we don't really need to do, so I don't know what it does. <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, if I'm not going to use it, you probably won't use it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm your average run-of-the-mill guy. I don't do anything crazy. I'm not skydiving. I'm not climbing the sides of mountains. I'm going camping. I'm drinking a couple beers, having a fire, barbecuing, spending time with my wife and family. And that's uh, kind of what this little tour was about. And so... I hope you enjoyed it. We are, we really like this 2204S camper. We're big fans of this layout. The twin beds are, are great for us. You know, I've had some comments from some buddies that kind of said, oh, are you going to have, you know, talking, you know, sexy time. Well, it, that's not going to stop us. You know, twin beds don't really make a difference. <laughs> we both fit in one twin bed if we have to. Wow. So, so don't worry about that. Don't let your buddies tell you twin beds are for guys that don't have sex. That's not true. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we're Helen and Joe. We're blowing the stink off. And I hope you stick around for more videos in the future. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>